Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session of the macroeconomics lesson that is national income accounting. Here in this session let us learn about the macroeconomic identities. The macroeconomic identities are the important key factors in affecting the GDP of a country. So the GDP of a country has lots of additions and subtractions to be made before it is derived. So there are seven important macroeconomic identities and these are the gross domestic product, the net domestic product, the gross national product, the net national product, the net national product at factor cost and the personal income as well as the personal disposable income. So the gross domestic product it is the aggregate value of the goods and services that is generated over a period of year. So this gross domestic product involves the consumption expenditure plus the investment expenditure plus the government expenditure along with the, the difference between the exports and imports. The second one is net domestic product that is GDP minus depreciation costs. The depreciation allowances and the depreciation costs are kept every year for the capital goods. These capital goods undergo lots of wear and tear over the passage of time and therefore these should be, de these should be deducted out of the GDP. The third one is gross national product here GDP plus net factor income from abroad. Here when we are considering the gross domestic product we calculate the income earned by foreigners in our country and we ignore the Indians who are earning in another countries. But here when we are calculating the gross national product we consider the net factor income from abroad that is people who have gone to abroad from our country and the net worth of goods and services that are produced by them and their net income is also considered. The fourth one is net national product that is GNP minus depreciation. Here again the gross national product that is derived out of the addition of GDP plus NFIA net to factor income from abroad will be considered and depreciation is deducted out of it. The fifth one is net to national product at factor cost. This factor cost is nothing but the cost incurred for the factors of production of a country. So the NDPFC plus NFIA. NFIA is net factor income from abroad. So this is also considered. The sixth one is personal income that is national income that is national income is deducted with three major portion of the payments national income and the three deductions along with one addition. The first one which is being deducted by national income is undistributed profits. The government or an economy earns lots of income from the different types of industries and it generates lots of money in the form of taxes as well as revenues. So all these taxes and revenues are not going to be distributed together in a particular year. So these undistributed profits, these profits are kept as reserves or savings. So these undistributed profits are deducted. The next one is net interest payments by households. The net interest payments made by households. Households also gather money for the production activity because lots of households are involved in income generation activities in the form of cottage industries and tiny industries. Today these households are also involved in the small scale industries. So all these industrial activities have to be organized with the help of capital and for gathering the capital these households pay interest. So the interest paid by the households is deducted. The net interest you can imagine the total number of small scale industries that are existing around our country and the interest for these arrangement of capital, arrangement of capital made by these households are deducted. The third one is deduction of corporate tax from the national income. Corporate tax is nothing but the 
corporate setups today are establishing everywhere in a country. So you can see the multinational companies are being established in a country and there are lots of service providing agencies which have entered the country in the name of business process outsourcing as well as knowledge process outsourcing. So these corporate structures you can see everywhere in every sector the corporate setup has has been emerged in the case of hospitality, in the case of education, in the case of infrastructure, in the case of service providing, everywhere these corporate structure and corporate style of setup has been entered in our, in our country and therefore they are going to pay taxes to the local government and these corporate taxes are deducted and then the transfer of payments to households by government. Government again in return after generating revenues from different sectors it pays the it pays money to the individual households not exactly in the name of money but they it, it pays the pensions in different forms it pays subsidies to the farmers and it supplies the goods in the fair price shops in a subsidized rate government invests lot of money on infrastructural activities and the people who are non-paying users are called as free riders that you have learnt. All these transfer of payments to households by government is considered as personal income. The last one is personal disposable income. Personal disposable income is consumption expenditure plus total savings. As an economy earns money and its GDP improves, the government keeps some amount as savings because, because entire part of the profits that are earned by the economy will not be spent together in a period of time. So these are kept as savings as contingency reserves or maybe in the form of different types of reserves. So all these are considered and these for personal disposable income is calculated by adding the savings to the consumption expenditure. So all these macroeconomic identities are very very important for calculating the GDP. These macroeconomic identities affect the GDP and it, it has its own additions and subtractions. So from the point of view of your examination, these macroeconomic identities will be there for 6 marks and in most of the question papers it is repeated. So hope you have all understood this. So let us now learn about the last topic that is the limitations of GDP, the gross domestic product. What are all the limitations in measuring the GDP? What are all the limitations that GDP has in measuring the national welfare of a country? So GDP is gross domestic product that is the aggregate value of the goods and services produced in a period of year. So the limitations are the first one is distribution of GDP and how uniform it is. The, and the second one is non-monetary exchanges and the third one is externalities. And these externalities may be of two types, the positive externalities and the negative externalities. So the first one is distribution of GDP, that is the distribution of the increased income in a economy and how is it distributed, whether it is uniformly distributed on all the productive sectors or the some sector may be given more importance and some might have been neglected. So how uniform is it that is the distribution of GDP because everywhere there is a concentration of wealth in every economy the wealth is concentrated with the small fraction of population. So only few people have wealth and rest of the people who are in the rest of the residents of a country are still suffering for to meet the basic needs. So here the GDP as a measure of national welfare is not going to satisfy the needs of all the residents of a country because it has its own limitations. If the government concentrates on only the poor people, the infrastructural development and other productive sectors are ignored. So the development will also 
be postponed so if the country or if an economy wants to lead the country towards the gdp growth then the government has to consider everything equitably the second one is non monetary exchanges here we can see that the government earns lot of money but for all the factors the government is not making payment for example the services of a homemaker is not at all paid everywhere with the assistance of homemakers only the households are sending the factors of production like labor and capital so the homemakers who are the indirect supporters of the economy indirect pillars of the economy are not at all paid they are not even having the salary no pension benefits no retirement benefits so this is the non monetary exchange the government or an economy gets services from the homemakers but there is nothing given to them in exchange in the underdeveloped regions of the remote corners of the country or in the world also you can still today also see the barter system of exchange of goods so one goods are exchanged with another type of goods and these exchanges are not registered so the income generated out of this or the expenditures related to it or the trading transactions related to this barter system is also not in mentioned and registered so they are again the non monetary exchanges so there are some types of transactions which do not have any kind of monetary involvement in it so again this is not considered while taking the calculation of gdp while doing the calculation of gross domestic product so again this may be a major portion and this may be contributing to the gdp also but when it is not considered it is again becomes a drawback in calculating the GDP. gdp the next one is externalities externalities are the unforeseen consequences of a firm that accrues to another firm or another person these externalities are the unforeseen happening or consequence that affects another person or maybe another firm so there are lots of externalities that are being occurring each day for example if in a village nearby that village a river may be passing and next to that river an industrialist will come and establish his industry he has both chances to help the citizens of that village as well as to destroy their peace also so therefore he get, he provides employment opportunities to the people who are residing in that village as well as he creates lots of pollution out of his industrial activities to the people who are residing in that village and in turn it results in different kinds of ailments so again the employment opportunities created in that village is a positive externality wherein the pollution caused through the industrial activity to that village is a negative externality so like this everywhere in every industrial setup we can find both the positive externalities as well as negative externalities the gdp will not consider this while calculating the national income while measuring the national income because positive externalities are going to increase the revenue of the government wherein the negative externalities are not going to help the income generation in that particular area in turn it results in different types of expenditure of that particular area so with this i conclude this session and in the a complete eight sessions of this national income accounting we have learnt about the measurement of the national income through different types of macroeconomic identities as well as different types of methods so hope you have all understood thank you